Richmond. Go with Forrest Scoot. And today, you know, there's a lot of new construction going on in my old neighborhood, starting with whatever this is. This used to be Payless Shoes. Then they knocked up Payless, knocked up? They got Payless Shoes pregnant? No, they knocked down Payless Shoes. And then they put this in, whatever this, what could this possibly be? Some stores have a shape, like certain, like if it was a Burger King, you would be able to recognize this is not gonna be a Burger King. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be a supermarket just by the front doors. What could it be? Let's, we'll find out shortly. Uh, Port Richmond is the neighborhood I spent the majority of my childhood in. Uh, I guess, how old was I? Uh, three, four, to about 18. I was born in Kensington. And uh, we moved to the neighborhood east of Kensington. This is the neighborhood right next to it. Um, look at this. This is new, as you can tell. I don't like, I don't know, there's, there's like, the new construction just doesn't have good personnel. I don't know, it's just, it doesn't feel Philly, Philly, you know? It feels more like Brooklyn. And, and uh, we all know uh, Brooklyn sucks. This is a, uh, there was a lot of industry in this section back in um, the 50s and 60s. You can see there's, these are either trolley tracks or train tracks. There's a railroad, uh, yeah, a few blocks down. Uh, and there used to be a lot of slaughterhouses in the neighborhood. And um, when they started making this a shopping district, uh, people said it still kind of had a smell to it. Uh, it, it the, the neighborhood had the smell of like the slaughterhouse. You could smell the pigs and shit. So, um, and there used to be a uh, crick that went through, is it a crick? Or was it like a tiny river? I don't know what it, it was a little tiny crick. I'm gonna call it a crick. And it was um, called Gunner's Run. And uh, Aramingo Avenue is built on top of Gunner's Run. This is Samuel's playground. Um, it was closed for a while. They had to uh, dig up the entire field. The entire, uh, this entire playground was covered in lead. And uh, good thing I played here as a child. And um, so they had to dig up the entire playground and put down new soil. That is, there are two playgrounds in this neighborhood. Both playgrounds I uh, was in as a child that uh, were completely covered in lead. My great, my high school was covered in asbestos. So, uh, you know, I'm lucky to be alive. That's... And this is the uh, cemetery at Port Richmond. I don't, uh, there's a little bit of space in here. Not much space in this cemetery, pretty full. How are you driving? Yeah, that's way too loud. I think we're both going the same speed. At least I'm not waking people up with my scooter. Yeah. Oh, what's the name of this cemetery? If anybody knows, let me know. I think it might be St. George's Cemetery. Oh, I don't know. Why am I going to make a guess if I don't know? But if you know, let me know. A lot of Polish names in here. I mean, everybody's Polish. Uh, Port Richmond was predominantly Polish up until uh, maybe the 80s. There was a street called Richmond Street, which is back that way. I'm going to just try to stick to the northern end of uh, Port Richmond. I usually don't. I neglect this area. I don't usually make videos in this area. Uh, but Richmond Street used to be full of like Polish bakeries, Polish diners. Um, we got a lot of, uh, you know what, let me show you. We got these little tiny 
kielbasa shops in in like garages in Port Richmond. Um, let me see, where are they at? Jev's is one, and I forget what the other one is called. I think it's down. I don't. I don't. I don't like kielbasa. It's it it. it uh, I don't know, there's something about it. It's greasy. There's something greasy about the, uh... This is St. George's. This is... This is the Catholic... When everybody talks about the Catholic school, the Catholic churches in Port Richmond, they talk about St. Albert's Nativity and Our Lady Help of Christians. Occasionally, they'll bring up MDG, Mother of Divine Grace. Very few people will bring up St. George's. I lived in Port Richmond, like I said, a long time. Oh, we're looking for the kibasi shops. Um, and I didn't even really know St. George's existed <laughs> until I was like 20. My ex-wife went here. She goes, oh, I went to school in Port Richmond. Where'd you go? St. George's. I goes, what the hell are you talking about? There ain't no St. George's in Port Richmond. Tilton. I want Tilton Street. Monsignor Joe's Path. These people, they're taking, they're taking a gamble. You see this? Trash day is tomorrow. So, if you put your trash out before, I say you dickhead, if you put the trash out before uh, five o'clock, the city has people that go around and they'll write you tickets. Um, they'll write you a ticket if you have your trash out too early. And sometimes, I, had a, I have a friend who went to grade school with me and she was going on vacation like a few weeks ago and she was leaving on the day of trash day, but she had to leave before noon. So she had to make a decision. Do I put my trash out early and go on vacation or do I leave my sit my trash sit out? Um, do I leave my trash sit out and then like, you know, get bugs and flies going around and have my neighbors all pissed off at me? Or, you know what she could have done? She could have said to her neighbor, or maybe she keeps her trash cans in her house, but she could have said to her neighbor, hey, pull out my trash for me? Sure, no problem. Here it is, Salmon and Shore. Where are we going? Dylan, here it is. Boy, I am. See, I don't mess with this part of Port Richmond. Go ahead. Oh, here it is. Okay, I found the kibasi shop. Now, this place, this the this uh, kibasi shop I'm taking you to now. It was in uh, the TV show Queer Eye that was on Netflix. Uh, it was part of Andrew Zimmerman's TV show uh, Bizarre Food. And um, here it is. Yeah, they make everything out of their, um, like this garage here. And the guy who works behind the counter at that kibasi shop is, he's just like the friendliest guy. He, he, he's very good at small talk. I'm horrible at small talk. And he'll, he'll ask you everything. And he'll go, oh, how you doing today? How you been? How's the family? He has no idea who the hell I am. He just says that to everybody. Makes you feel like makes you feel welcome, though. Uh, I think his name's John. So, this is the recycling plant where they, uh, when I was a kid, my friend Pat told me, oh, if you walk around the neighborhood picking up cans, you can get a lot of money. And they'll, they'll give you money at this place. I said, ah. And I went around the neighborhood. I started collecting cans. 
and uh, I filled up this trash bag with cans. It was really, it was probably the most exciting thing um, I ever did. I went around collecting cans, and uh, the guy yelled at me. The guy was like, yo, you have Yoohoo cans in with your cans. Yoohoo cans aren't aluminum. Meanwhile, I'm like seven years old. I don't, I, why? What's aluminum? I, I, it's a can. Recycle the guy there. So then, he, yeah, so the guy yelled at me. And then, so here comes the big reward. They said, listen, you walked around the neighborhood, you started collecting cans. Here is a dollar eighty-one. And I looked at my buddy Pat and I said, what the hell did you get me doing for a dollar eighty-one? Wasting an entire day? I mean, I learned a lesson. You don't go collecting cans. It doesn't really pay off. Not really worth it. This is a uh, Campbell Square. Look at this big bill. Kind of has a um, kind of has a, a feel of the the parks in Center City, um, Franklin Square, Rittenhouse Square, Washington Square. Not as nice, but it, it definitely has like the layout with the trails and the paths. No fountain. You got a little bit of like a, a thing here. You got some um, homeless encampment. Not a camp, it's just like where they hang out. This is my old church, Nativity BVM. BVM stands for Blessed Virgin Mary. <laughs> I was an altar boy for a long time. I would love to know what this giant smokestack's for. If you know, why does Nativity BVM have this big smokestack? If you could, I would, maybe they burned their trash? I don't know. It's very exciting. I just don't get, I don't get the tall socks. If you're gonna go out running, why, why, I mean, you're practically wearing pants. When you wear socks up to the bottom of your kneecaps, and then you wear shorts that, that don't go over your kneecaps, the only thing being cool is your kneecaps. So why don't, why don't, why not just wear pants? Unless, unless you're, you know, your knees get hot, but. I have a friend who goes to the gym every day. He does the uh, the gym pictures, and uh, just so you know, if you if you do that, if you if you go to the gym every day and you post pictures about it, um, you know we'll give you support. We'll go oh, okay, good job. But after doing it for uh, seven months, you can stop. We get it. You work out now. But the thing is, with my buddy, he's he's still he's still fat. He's been he goes to the gym every day. He works out. He takes pictures. And he hasn't lost a goddamn pound. And he's not fat. He's a little bit heavier than me. I wouldn't say I'm fat. I'm uh, not husky. But I weigh over two bills. So that's a... But I don't post pictures of me working out in the gym. So I, you know, I don't expect you guys to keep track of my weight. But yeah, he posts pictures. Him and his wife working out at the gym. And when he works out, he wears sweatpants, jackets. Maybe that's why he looks fat, because he's wearing so much clothes. But I saw him in person recently. And I was like, ah, oh, you're working out an awful lot. And he goes, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, uh, oh, wow, there's a new house that's going here. I remember when they built these. These were built either late 80s, early 90s. And then, wow, this whole, this whole lot 
This was a this was just a parking lot. And now, wow man, look at all these houses. I wonder how much they'll sell. They're, they're selling houses at Frankfurt and Lehigh for 300000 And it's this new construction. And sometimes, I'll tell you the truth, this construction. In Fishtown, there are houses where the siding just blow off, windows fall out. Not the best construction. They don't use uh, union labor and... Uh, not that you have to have union labor to have everything perfect, but it just seems the union guys have a just a higher standard. And uh, I, I know a woman who goes around the city protesting demolitions of old buildings, and one of her gripes is when they build this new construction, it won't even last half the time of the buildings. Like there's this big bank in Fishtown, and they're going to knock it down. That bank's been over there for a hundred years. And it, if it has a new roof, it could be there for another hundred years. But they're going to knock it down and put up one of those, a bunch of those new houses. And they're going to be falling apart in about 60 years. This is one of those. This is one of those weird streets. This is Gall Street. And is it two ways here? Yeah, no, it's it, it's a it's one of those weird streets. It's a one-way street for a little bit, then it becomes a two-way street, and uh, you know, why why does it do that? Does anybody ever talk it? Like why why does? Why does Gold Street do that? This is uh, Samuel's Pool. Now, when I was a kid. We would go, Samuel's pool is the deepest pool in the neighborhood. I think eight feet deep. Right here. And uh, one of the things they do in the neighborhood pools is they want to make sure you, you can swim before you go to the deep end. So you got to take a test. Like you got to take a swimming test before you can go into the deep end. I remember when my kids, I live in Bridesburg now. My kids wanted to get swimming, uh, take swimming the deep end of the Bridesburg pool. And I remember my uh, son, Sam, it was like for a week, he was focused on uh, getting his um, ability, his, his privilege to swim in the deep end pool. And when it, when it happened, it was a big deal. It made him very happy. All right, that's it, we did it, Port Richmond. Lots of new construction, lots of old spots. This is a got the look. This is where they, uh, if you if you're if you're looking for the look, they got the look right here. Let's see what the look look like. Look, uh, listen. Those aren't even. I mean, they're they're just. Are they pants or are they chains with a little bit of uh, denim? I think they're chains with denim. Uh, yeah, this you see this thing? It's just like a, a, these pants thing. It's it's like a dress pant thing, and like you know, the slit goes up the side. I went to this concert on the Fourth of July, and I saw so many people wearing them. And uh, man, I never seen pants that were so revealing. The revealing, reveal. Ooh, that's a thought. Reveal. Ooh, revealing. Ooh, hold on. Let's practice this. Reveal. Ooh. Revealing. 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 That's it. I don't talk good. I'm well aware of that. I took speech therapy for uh, four or five years. Um, yeah, the TH. I say breakfast wrong. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a good talker. Fun thing is uh, for a living, I talk. I host Quizzo, I do this, I do that. Why well, do this and Quizzo? Just not a good talk. And one of the things I say at Quizzo, when I mispronounce something, I always say, oh, I don't talk too good. All right, well, listen. Not really uh, exciting, Scoot. You know, um, 
Well, make sure you hit like and subscribe. And I'll sail with you later. Oh, if you're going to go to the Burlington Coat Factory, now's the time. Otherwise, the one cashier, and if you come in an hour, the one cashier will have a line. Really long line. Boy, I parked like an asshole. Holy God. Toodles!